The ancients had different symbols that they used for consciousness and energy, and uh, this is one of them. This is uh, called the Tao. Uh, some may know it as the yin and the yang. And this represented the all, everything, because everything is conscious. Everything is consciousness ultimately. It's all energy. And there are different mixtures of different types of energies. And uh, the Taoist um, um, philosophy codified this in this symbol, the, the, uh, the Tao, the yin yang, by um, a mixture of two basic polar energies, one being light, one being dark, one being male, one being female. They called these the yin and yang. Now, yang is on the left there, and it's solar. It has to do with light, the sun. It's masculine in its qualities. It's active. It's more analytical. And, and it's a dominant energy. It's more left brain. We're, we're going to talk about the structure of the brain later on. And it can, it can be aggressive. It's, it's, it's dominant. It's active. It's a, a male thrusting principle. Okay? The, the darker energy, yin, is associated with the moon, which is up at night, okay? at, when it's dark. It's a feminine, a more feminine or passive energy. It relates more with intuition than with analytical thought or, lo or logic. It's more submissive than dominant. It's more right-brained. And it deals with concepts of compassion and nurturing. So the ancients looked at this as these are the qualities that are in all of us, not just men and women. It's not just male or female. This masculine and feminine energy is indwelling in all of us, whether we are male or female. And we have to strike a blend, a perfect blend or an equilibrium of these two types of energies, male and female, yang and yin. So what we're going to talk about later is how one of these energies is really seemingly dominating the other more in the modern world.